You've heard of it, haven't you? The legend of Sparta? When I was young, my father would tell me stories about it. Long ago, in ancient times, a demon rebelled against his own kind for the sake of the human race. With his sword, he shut the portal to the demonic realm and sealed the evil entities off from our human world. But since he was a demon himself, his power was also trapped on the other side. I never believed it. I thought it was just a child's fairy tale. But I discovered that this so-called legend wasn't a myth at all. Sparta existed. How do I know? Well, I met the sons of Sparta. Both of them. Though the same blood of their father flowed through their veins, the two battled each other fiercely like arch enemies. It seemed as if they derived some sort of twisted pleasure from this brotherly fighting. Sorry, not open for business yet. <laughs> I haven't even picked a name for this joint, and I'm already getting calls. You a customer too? <laughs> well, if you want to use the bathroom, help yourself. The toilet's in the back. Is your name Dante, son of Sparta? Where did you hear that? From your brother. He sent this invitation for you. Please, accept it. Invitation, huh? He's getting crazy. Let's rock. Woohoo! <laughs> 
Alright, so welcome to mission one, a crazy party, a violent response to an insane caller. As you can see, we've got mission start and customize, and for now we're just going to customize. As you can see, we've got a variety of options, style, equip, item, action, guns, and exit. I don't need to explain what exit does though, so we're going to go ahead and go into style. You got the... T and um, I actually accidentally quit out of this, we'll come back to this in just a moment. But as you can see, we've got four styles, trickster, swordmaster, gunslinger, and royal guard. And we'll be going through those in just a moment as I come back into the menu to show what a few of them do. As a trickster, you get the ability to wall hike, run up walls and run across walls and dash in various directions. It makes for a good offensive slash offensive capability so you can get to enemies to and away from quite quick. Swordmaster gives you a... Uh, well, you can improve the damage of your swords and other various melee weapons and it gives you extra melee swings such as aerial rave allowing you to swing in mid-air. And Gunslinger being one of the well, one of the people's favourites, as you can charge your shots, fire them, fire much more quickly in two some time, which is fucking awesome. Your analogs basically become your arms, and you can shoot in any various directions you like. But for the primarily, I will be using the Royal Guard stance, which is my favourite. You use Royal Guard to block and oh, there we go back in. You use it to block and parry and negate enemy damage, sometimes completely removing it. Once you maximise the depth, well, once you maximise how much you've blocked and charge up the energy stored up from all the attacks that you've parried, you can release the energy for a devastating attack that can probably one-shot most monsters, providing you have um, stored up enough energy. But with that, we'll just get straight to the mission, shall we? As you can see here, we've got some monsters, sloths, and they are, well, they drop red magical orbs. I wish my blood was crystal, but for that matter, let's just collect it. It's good stuff. It's money. It's the it's the currency of the current game, and, ba and the way to get more of it is to increase the style gauge on the top right there. Once you increase the style gauge, as you can see, it goes up from C to B to A to S. The tri and the highest rank being the triple S, which you will no doubt see me get every so often. The higher the gauges, the more orbs you receive, and the more the more abilities, items, and actions you will be able to receive. Fantastic stuff. Here we've got the Lust Monster. You've really got to focus your priorities on the Lust Monster, as they like to uh, jump without, well, jump out of your camera vision, and they basically come swooping in, will slash your ass up right as you're not looking. You've really got to take them down fast and furious, and they don't have numbers as the pro the um, the Black Pride monsters. Black Pride? <laughs> oh dear. Uh, don't misconstrue that. Um, other than that, the Pride monsters uh, have very good dodging capabilities, and they can get a little frustrating. They're not the hardest monster of the game, but they certainly aren't the easiest. Yeah, just do what you can, take them out. As you can see, I'm doing these weird ver variety of actions, such as taunting the monster. To be able to do this actually increases your style gauge by about, say, 1.5%. Well, not 1.5%, a 1.5 multiplier. And it will, well, basically, the higher you can get it, the more orbs you get, so why not? Fucking kicking some ass, motherfuckers, yeah! But down they go like hearty bitches. Woo! As you can see there, I parried and negated their energy. That giant flash symbolises when I just fucking completely negate everything that they do to me like a boss. And down they go. Mission over. And I forgot the orb there. I can already tell. Looks like this is gonna be one hell of a party! As the mission clears, you get a various rankings to pay based on um, how well you did the mission. Time, orbs, stylish points, damage, and items used. <clears throat> Abs. 
that is my rank for today. Abs. I've got so many abs. I've got three A's of them. And I would just go on ahead and save. Motherfucker, this game is so fast-paced. Even more fast-paced than my other games. Mission 2, the Blood Link. And I'll uh, repeat that. Anyway, as we're going to go into action, you will probably, if you don't suck at this game, get more orbs and you will be able to buy the various skills. As you can see, we have Stinger, Drive, Air Hike. But go ahead and buy Stinger. I will recommend that you always buy this after the first mission. And if you do not suck, you will have enough money for it. So it's time for Mission 2, the Blood Link. Bludgeon the devils like an iron hammer. Damn it! You guys totally wrecked my shop, and I haven't even named it yet! You're gonna pay for that. <laughs> As you can see, Dante is very serious about his financials. It's a pretty bad start for a business, don't you think? Right out first day before it even opens, the building just collapses? But that's just an average day in the life of Dante. I really wish he had a last name, because it would sound so much more dramatic that way. Anyway, the reason I recommend that you buy the Stinger move is that, as you can see, if once I do it again, that the Stinger helps close the gap if you are not using the Trickster style. And without the trickster style, you will be able to, um, well, just, just like that, just get right up in the enemy's face and start blastering away. It's very good. It's a very useful technique to uh, try and basically keep the pressure on the hardest enemies. Try and keep them busy while you're just slashing away at their face. Because as long as you're attacking them, they can't attack you. But as you can see from the Lust's movement, the Red Demon, if you haven't already recognised, is that they do like to get out of the camera space. Oh, shish kebab! Motherfuckers. Bam! There we go. Anyway, they do like to jump out of camera camera sight and uh, just get up all up on your ass and just rip up your grill like a motherfucker. Oh, here's the Wrath Demon. Do not stand close to this. As you can imagine, that glowing thing is an explosive. It can work to your advantage should you play it correctly. And here's another one. Fuck. They are completely immune to melee attacks, so you know. But standing too close of them will cause the um, the orb on their head to explode. You might ask, why are these demons simply disappearing to stand? Well, the demons in the lore of Devil May Cry 3 are actually based on sand. They are physically entities made out of sand and nothing more. And here we've got a fight with Star, something that we can use to restore our health later on when we need it. Well, bam just lay on that pressure, don't let up. It's good to, um, if you have to move cl slowly towards them, be sure to spam your fire button, because I'm pretty sure it will slow them down from getting up. This is the Hell Scythe Demon, as coming up. He is the first mini-boss of the game, and really fucking easy, but I actually tried to prolong this fight so we get a good look at his animations. You can strike him about three times while he's parrying until he strikes back down on you, and then you just um, just continue on like normal. Side roll out of the way and you'll be fine. But the thing is that you want to ow, ow. Yes, he also teleports and slashes you. That's one of the most painful things about him. The one thing you want to try and do is make sure that Dante's back is facing the camera as directly as possible. Otherwise the controls get a little finicky and you might just end up back flipping straight into his scythe. And also, don't try and fight him in a tight corner like this, as he may get caught on a wall, like I do right here, and uh, gets my ass slashed up by a side. All in all, he's not really a tough boss fight, he's a mini-boss, and be careful for that. When you start to see the ripples going about, do not hang around, you need to get the fuck out of there. And yes, you can also dodge bullets, for your information. Let me show you. Ow, no, ow. No. Watch him dodge bullets. Fuck! Fuck, fuck, come on! Asswipe!
It's been nearly a year since we last met. Where does the time go? No doubt, you've got some fun planned for me. Right, Virgil? And mission complete, and that will be the end of episode 1 of Let's Play Devil May Cry 3, Dante's Awakening. I spent 3 minutes on that, and that constitutes as a D. We've got dads all up in this joint. Dads! So many dads you do not even know. And that will be the end of Let's Play Devil May Cry 3 Part 1. See you next time.